Hello, uh, we are the team Beyond, and I'm Chiara, uh, she's Kat. I'm Emma, I'm Ali. Rob, Chatter. Okay. Uh, okay, our aim is to enhance company productivity and value by supporting employees to rediscover and build joyful working environments. So, uh, research by Warwick, uh, a uni economist, has found that happier workers are 12% more productive. And uh, at the same time, companies are unsure how to go about making this scenario happen. So we've come up with a brand new service that will offer bespoke, playful and transformative experiences to reinvigorate tired and uninspired workplaces like those that I guess Pete works at. <laughs> <laughs> Workmates will add value to businesses struggling with negative, stressful or simply flat working environments by creating a tailor-made platform to bring existing team building services together with unique playful interventions designed specifically with your team in mind. These experiences will aim to empower staff to own the culture building process to create sustainable change that, unlike conventional services, will flourish long after the program has ended. Um, so how does it work? So here is, here, here is Mark, he is searching for a, uh, he is searching for a way to, uh, to make his employees happy and he finds us, workmate, he contact us and uh, make a range appointment with us and so we go to his office and understand what he needs so we make out a draft service packages for them and after that what made us so revolutionary we experience what their daily life and uh, we interview with them, understanding what they're complaining about and uh, collecting data from them, understanding what made them happy. <laughs> and uh, so come up to our scrapbooks and uh, we gather the information to create a ta tailored perform uh, program. Yeah, now uh, we then gather in groups in an informal and safety place then we build a wall of dreams. We generate ideas and then we make commitments that uh, we're gonna have to make the re ideal in a reality. Uh, so basically we take the um, existing kind of team building activities and what we then try and do is sort of extend that. Um, so we use our insights that we gain from that first process of going into the workplace and we tailor it specifically to individuals and to departments. So we've got Jane here, she works in the design team. They're very kind of closed off, they don't communicate with other teams, they don't really communicate much with each other and they don't really seem to get involved on a personal level. So what we've decided to do is we've taken Jane's love of cooking and we've told her to create a recipe, split up the ingredients and share them amongst her workmates. They all go out, purchase an ingredient and come together to then learn and share in Jane's experience. This improves the communication within the team and it also helps them to kind of find a little bit of, you know, something personal about one another that they can connect with. So we also look at you know, a communication across departments. So we send out postcards to random individuals within the team. And these postcards have like a, a, a quarter of a QR code on them. So then they have to go out, find other people in departments with these postcards, link them up, take a snapshot, and get great social rewards that they can share in. Yeah. Uh, so there are many examples that we can run off. Uh, what is our aim is to have a kind of invisible and visible layer. So. Uh, what is in, invisible, for example, employees um, near, are the core value of the company. And so, for example, the company has to have investors and other partnership where they need to be interested more. And so, every employer uh, has to know that it's very important too. So, uh, we, run, uh, we take care of before, meanwhile, and after uh, of this program in order to have uh, often uh, feedback on these activities. So, uh, to 
to, for example, to have kind of magazine and case studies on the website, so to let people know what their role is within the, their process. So, yeah. And uh, of course, uh, the cost, maybe there is just a first step of, uh, of the cost. Meanwhile, it's a kind of uh, main wages and main power in order to yeah, embrace them and then let this process part of the company without any help from outside. The brilliant thing about this is that it's. Wait, well, what's the brilliant thing about this? The brilliant thing about this is that they're doing it all themselves. And like the best design solutions, we're just. It, what we've created is so obvious that it's like we weren't even there. Our involvement is big at the beginning, but it completely tails off and it's, they're doing it themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Why would people want us to do that? Why would or? they let you? Okay. Um, basically, I think what we do is we provide a very different service. Uh, there's a lot of companies out there, and we've, we know this from our own experiences and from talking to a lot of people around the room, uh, from, the, from mem you know, participants here and the mentors, that companies spend a lot of money on trying to improve productivity. If you think everything from your Christmas parties to your um, your summer parties to just going down to the pub for lunch. Now all this money is being spent on this anyway. What we propose to do is not to come in as experts and make this organisational change. That's not what we're doing. We're bringing it all together so it has a long-term purpose. So we have all these little things. We have big things like these away days, which are big, uh, high-level disruptive activities which shake things up. But it's about also about us perpetuating those really small things, those tiny things like sending the postcard or just sending, we might tailor, because we know that certain members of the team will send a, a note to yourself and you, you might then, your task will be to go out and do something nice for someone else secretly. So it's all these low level things that keep it going and make that money that you spend on the big stuff worthwhile. Thank you, and um, um, how do you think you'll go about finding your first customer? Well, actually, this is something that we were, obviously, with our prototyping, it's quite an elaborate thing, and although we've got um, very good feedback from the people we've talked to, the only way to test it is actually go in and do this, so and invest the time in it. So we would think that one of your companies might be a perfect place to start to run a two-day workshop. <laughs> Where I work is a bit like the army. <laughs> Say that uh, we're actually pretty good already. <laughs> no, 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 no. We could always do with help. But um, I think, um, have you thought about what types of sectors this would apply to? Yes. Because um, I think the army is the most hierarchical, you know, workplace out there, and there are a lot of workplaces that I don't see this would fit with. Okay. The ones uh, I do see that there are a lot of places we won't fit with. Um, we started thinking, well, is it public sector, is it private sector? We're thinking professional services particularly. But ideally, it's any, any sort of team-based environment where you've got people working from different visions or backgrounds. I mean, it may be that it's designers and developers or, you know, in the type of areas that we work with where you've got people that are, you know, don't really have aligned goals. It may be that they have different backgrounds or geographical locations. It may be different levels of experience. It might be just the customer-facing versus non-customer-facing. So or it could be what what picture people have in their mind of the, their impact on the grand scheme of things. So people higher up might know how the customers, how you're actually benefiting the customers, but someone that only gets to pick up the phone every day, or they only get to write this little bit of code, has no idea. So it's any situation like that. For starters, we would be wanting to go into probably smaller professional services companies, um, ideally between 20 to 100 employees. Um, potentially even smaller, 20 to 50 employees, just so that we can tailor it, get that process down properly. But ideally, once we get built up enough um, success in those areas, then we can go and target it to public, um, public sector 
uh, where they obviously need quite a bit of help. I don't know if anyone works with public sector, but when I had it, it wasn't that much fun. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, have you guys thought about? <laughs> and, did, and did you know I was going to ask that? Well, yeah, I had an inkling. Um, <laughs> I think where we want to take it is obviously it needs that testing to see where it is viable. I think we feel confidently that this is a viable idea. There is a need for it. There is money in it, and it's something we feel passionately about. Myself, I've had numerous what did you call it, mid-career crisis? I thought it was a quarter-life crisis, but maybe I'm edging further up. Maybe I'm not a quarter way through my life. Maybe I'm further. But, um, I think we need to test it. I think we have the capabilities and the experience here to um, actually develop this prototype as we go. Um, in the end, I don't, I don't know whether we necessarily want to be, we don't always want to be the people on the ground that are doing this. We can train up facilitators. And because it is just facilitators, we are getting real experts in to do, so those big away days, we're not saying we're gonna go out and get everyone to hold hands and yeehaw. What we're doing is being the creative people that get those right people in. So this is very doable for us and I think I'm in all the way. How about you guys? So thank you, I've actually got one follow-up question for you. Um, I understood you to say that you were thinking about sort of aggregating existing team building yes. within organizations. But do you think you would also be able to help in individual employees feel valued? Is that part this is, of what this you're is the at? entire premise? Is that we are helping the business? Yes, they're the people that have to get us in. But it's not about the business. It's about helping these individuals find value in what they're doing, to find the joy in their work again, right. and by feel value to themselves. Yes, we're empowering them so that they can take control and feel valued. And value each other. Yeah. Sure. So it's. It's completely and productivity flows all, from that as a yeah, nice benefit. All, although afterwards. our customer is a business, mm. our focus is entirely those individuals. Right. Okay. Nothing. Thank you. <laughs>